How's it going folks? I just thought I'd do a quick little video about this um, chocolate gold in there. It's not actually chocolate, it's actually fish poop. I did a consultation with Brian on the weekend, one of our supporters, g'day mate, and also had a question through our guide about the mineralization tank. So I thought I'd just do a quick explanation. It's not a complete how-to or anything, uh, just for everyone here on YouTube as well as Brian. Um, so what we're trying to do is collect the waste from these little fellas down there. They're our little jade perch, a bit hard to see first thing in the morning. Uh, the waste comes up through the soles lifting outlet, as you all know, into a radial flow settler. Um, the waste water comes up, the flow is redirected downwards uh, through the stilling well and then settles out on the base. So when it comes time to um, empty this little jobby here, what we do is we open up a valve on the side and I have uh, like a U-shaped piping system there and it draws the water level down, decants off basically the clean water to about this level here. So we've probably only got about 40 or 50 um, litres in the base of this. So that water there is pumped out, open a valve, turn my pump on, hook on some hose and it gets pumped up here into this drum which as you can see has some air running through it. Now adding solids to the mineralizer is generally something you do after you make some space by adding some clear mineralized water back to the system but we'll chat about that in a tick. Now what I would normally do just quickly is I would pump the water out through that pump and deliver it down the back to either the garden beds or the lime tree bed uh, because we didn't want to waste the nutrients but it is a lot better if you can recycle those nutrients and put them back into the bed and that's why we're using a mineralization tank. Now the reason why we've got a lot of air going in there is because um, aerobic decomposition or mineralization of waste is a lot faster and more efficient than do it anaerobically. Um, the bottoms of ponds, um, that's an uh, anaerobic decomposition and the soil in the bottom of a pond or a dam is actually very nutrient rich. A lot of organic matter gets washed in there, breaks down over time, a long period of time. But as far as aquaponics goes, uh, this is probably one of the best way to recycle as many nutrients as you can to keep them in the system. So how this works is we basically have a vessel. Uh, the airlines with the stones sit uh, down right on the base, continually aerating the mixture and that basically gives oxygen for the aerobic bacteria to do their job and mineralize the waste. Here we have a line that, that draws off just above halfway. Uh, there is a bit of a section of pipe on the inside with a little bit of a drain fitting on the end as well. And that is where I decant off the water when I want to add it back into the aquaponic system. Now the process for doing that is pretty easy. Um, basically I've filled up the barrel over a number of months from waste from the aquaponic system. It's been bubbling away now for a fair while, a couple of months, maybe three. And when I want to put the water back in, all I do is turn off the air and that allows all the solids, or a lot of the solids I should say, to settle off down onto the bottom of the tank. Now after a couple of hours, preferably um, four or five, I then open this valve here and put the water into one of these buckets down the bottom here. I do find though that the first bit that comes out is very um, muck laden and that's because it's just collected in the, uh, the pipe work there um, during the bubbling process so I just save that off to one side and add it back in later. Uh, once the water is in the bucket I let it um, sit, uh, thanks Matthias for that tip, um, for a couple of hours again just to let any more sediment drop out. Luckily I haven't had a lot in there and then that water then just gets tipped straight into the grow beds, adding the mineralized nutrients back in. Now, one thing a lot of people do is they add a carbon source for the bacteria. That's something I haven't done yet because being winter, we're not getting a lot of waste in there. I thought I'd wait until we have a larger waste load, a lot more solids when the fish are feeding heavier, and then we'll start adding a carbon source in there. Our popular carbon sources are molasses, um, sugar, um, but I'm going to use flour. Mr. Paul Van, thank you very much, mate. He suggested that flour was a great cheap carbon source to pop in there. And I have some leftover bread making flour from when I was doing sourdough. So I'm going to add a couple of handfuls in there. As to how much, um, yeah, I can't really tell you. From memory, Paul said round about two um, semi-generous handfuls in a 200 litre or 50, 55 gallon um, digester, so, uh, or mineralizer. so yeah. That's pretty much well how it's set up. Um, the, the manufacturer, as I said, you know, you just got some holes in the top there. You could just have a single line in with a splitter down the base and then, yeah, just somewhere to draw it off down the side. 
Uh, there are different ways you can hook it up. Um, Matthias said um, from Aquaponics Anonymous on Facebook, you know, mate. Um, he um, said he tried the Vortex method with a pump in there, aerating it that way. Um, he said, you know, go back to the stones. Uh, one thing you will have issues with with your stones, though, is they may clog up over over time. So you will need to clean those stones off. Something I haven't done as of yet. And just looking at the air, amount of air in there, I think I might have to because she's not quite bubbling as ferociously as she used to. So there's a bit of a uh, quick explanation for you folks. And as I said, these guys here, uh, they're just not really providing a lot of nutrients at the moment. It's just too cold. I think the temp is round about 18 degrees this morning. Oh, 19, it's slowly going up. I don't know if you can see it there in the display. So they might get a little bit of food later on this afternoon. So there you go. Oh, and just quickly, for you folks who are interested, there will be uh, more information posted to our guide um, once I film it on the digester. Um, yeah, later on in the season when it's working more efficiently. If you're interested in the guide, there will be a link in the description down below if you want to suss it out. And just to let you know, I've um, filmed a video for this weekend on the aquaponics on different beds that we're planning to put in the new system. So that will be uploaded on Sunday. And just to show you these things over here, uh, I, you probably would have seen these in last week's video, uh, just when we were thinning out the beds, getting ready to plant some seedlings out. Um, haven't picked up the seedlings yet, but when they do, we'll be planting out here and over there as well. And yeah, so anyway, that's um, a little bit on the digester. I will let you folks go. Hope you're all well and happy and your gardens and aquaponics are booming and I'll catch you next vid. Cheers folks, happy growing.